Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up a hard system. So as you can see over here, there are two spawns in my game and every time it triggers the next round, it's going to spawn one more actor. But of course, I'm going to be showing how we can set this up to have personalized rounds as well. So actually they are going to be dying after 5 seconds just because I'm activating this depth event. But basically what it's going to do is that it's going to be detecting when there is no more uh, units on the ground. There's going to be a small delay and then go to the next round that's going to be increasing in difficult and so on and so on. In order to create our hard system, we are actually going to be using the first person template this time. And I have created a few things already, just the basic enemy that I'm going to be using to spawn over here. So I'm going to be using this enemy, and he has some basic logic that's going to be setting our player up, and then I'm going to start chasing our player. So as you can see over here, his behavior tree only does that. And then he also has the enemy controller that's going to be running that behavior tree, and setting our player, and then the BP enemy class has some event in damage in case you want to use this for testing but he's going to basically uh, trigger this event of death after 10 seconds so that's basically it I'm going to be creating the horror system using this then you can also use this to respawn an actor that you want uh, so this is just for testing let's go to our content drawer then let's go to content folder and then as you can see here I was testing a bit so I have this, this already created I'm going to just be deleting that then right click, let's select blueprint class and let's select our actor. And this one is going to be our BP underscore part. Like that. Let's open this up. And then over here, I'm not going to make any component to see that this is in my environment because I don't want the player to be able to see this. So let's say I want to just drag this. Uh, I'm going to be deleting this enemy over here. I want to just drag this on the world and be invisible like that, but this is where the enemy is going to be spawning from. And then let's go to our BP hard. Since this could uh, start to get complicated uh, very quickly, I'm going to be setting an interface as well. So back to our content drawer, right click, then select blueprint and then select blueprint interface. This interface is going to be our hard underscore interface then let's go to our class settings into our dp hoard and then let's implement this interface right here let's just search for it this one over here now let's do the same thing on the actor that you want to spawn things in the world your enemy or anything that you want to use for this and over here implemented interface and then just add the same one like that so there's going to be two events that I'm going to be using in this for the interface. The first event is to actually set our uh, reference to the right spawning actor. So in this case, I want a reference for this BP horde in our game. Let's say if you have multiple BP horde, you may want to set this up and it's not going to give any trouble to set this up. Let's say set underscore spawn. And then it's going to have an input for a actor. So this one's going to be his this spawn. And then let's just get a bit of space over here. And then the type is going to be a actor. And then actor object reference. Just like that. Compile, save it. Now let's go to our BP horde. And then basically what I want to do over here is that I think on the event begin play. I'm going to be starting a event. I could call this, let's say, start game. I think I'm going to be using that. So let's just, just search for custom event. This one's going to be for start the score game. And basically, what I want to do is that I'm going to have multiple rounds. And the more the player goes further, the more difficult it's going to be. But of course, you can change the level as well. I'm going to be showing how you can do that. So I'm going to have a variable for our round. This variable is going to be an integer, just like that. And then on the event begin play, I'm not going to be using any of those events, so I'm going to just be deleting that. And then on the event begin play, I am going to be first thing, I'm going to be setting our round. I'm going to be starting at zero. 
and then I'm going to be calling this event start game. So let's just get start game over here, just like that. So in this event, the first thing that I want to do is to get our round. So this one's going to be called it multiple times. Even through I call it the start game, this one's going to be called it every time you go to the next round. So let's, I could actually rename this. Yeah, I think it would be the best option to rename this event. So let's just rename it, let's say next round, it would be journey. So, and then from this, I'm going to get our round and I'm going to be adding plus one, just like that. There is one more thing that you need to do is that I don't know exactly how we want to set this up, but I am, I think we will have going to have a specific number of minions in every case. So I'm going to also be having another variable that's going to be able to tell me when our player has killed all of the minions or something like that. So let's just create a new variable that's going to be minions alive. Like that. I'm going to be set it up here as well. Because for this example, I'm going to be using, uh, let's say, the round that I am in is going to be the number of minions that's going to be spawning because there is only one enemy that I'm going to be using here. And then I am going to get a for each loop. Uh, actually, it's going to be a for loop. Sorry about that. So get a for loop over here. The first index, uh, it depends on you what you want to be setting this up. I'm going to be using a round and getting it as the last index. One thing that you need to know is that in this case, index start at zero. So in this case, if we start at level at round zero, over here it's going to be adding one. And in this case, it's going to be counted by two. So let's say this one's going to be playing two times. I don't think I want this at the start. So instead, I'm going to be changing the first index to one, like that. And then I'm going to get spawn AI from class, just like that. I'm going to be getting the on class that I want to spawn over here. In my case, it's going to be our BP underscore enemy that I have already created. And the behavior is going to be any behavior that I have already created over here, these simple things, uh, just for to demonstrate. And then I am going to be setting our spawn. I think it was, let's see, yeah, this one over here. So I'm going to be setting our spawn, but it's going to be a message. So let's just search for set spawn. And then let's disable context sensitive and let's get this message over here, just like that. The target is going to be our return value and our spawn is going to be self. And let's enable context sensitive again. Let's get a reference for self. And that should be good. Now compile it, save it. Now there's one more thing that I need to do. I want to know when this event is over. So for that, let's say one, I should go to the next round. So one thing that I could do for that is, as I'm doing over here, is to know when there's no more minions alive. So for that, I'm going to be create another a function in our, our interface. So let's add a new function over here. This one's going to be uh, minions death, like that. And there's no need for input or output, just leave it like that. And this time, this event uh, is actually going to be called over here. So I'm going to just be getting uh, minions. That actually, I could just get over here minions dev, like that. And then I am going to be getting our minions alive. And let's say every time this event is called is when our player kills one of our minions, and then it's going to decrease. Give us bracket one. From it, and I'm going to be set a new value for our minions alive, just like that. And then, if this is let's say less or equal to zero, should stop every time at zero. But and, and for to avoid any problem, let's leave it at zero like that. I'm going to get a branch, and then I am going to get next round, just like that. Compile it, save it, and basically what this is going to do is that it's going to our next round is going to get into here. Uh, just remember that the minions uh, alive is going to be set every time, so do not need to worry about that. And we have this function is going to spawn our AI from class, 
Just one thing, in my case, I am going to only be spawning more minions. But one thing that you could do to, let's say, personalize your levels, your rounds and things like that, you could actually get, let's say, instead of setting it by just increasing the minions level, you could get a round like this and get uh, a switch on int like that. And you could add as many as you want. And you could have, let's say, a specific function to do certain things at a specific level. And then the next level, do another thing, and then another thing, and then another thing, and so on. Uh, so that would be quite useful if you have different things in each level. I'm not going to be using that, so I'm going to only be compiling like that and saving. Now let's go to our BP enemy. The first thing that we need to set over here is to set our spawn. So uh, to do that, I actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to be just be creating this event set spawn over here. And basically what this is going to do is that I need to only promote this to a variable to know which one is our spawn. Uh, actually, I have this variable spawn over here. Is that because I was using, I was testing this before creating this video. So I'm going to actually be deleting this and this and this. No need to worry about that. I'm going to only be promoting that to a variable like that. And this is our spawn. That's it for this function. Don't need to do anything else. And the next thing that I need to do is to call it when our, our menu dies. So as you can see over here, we have this simple event for our death from our menu. That's going to have a delay and it's going to destroy the actor. So basically what I want to do is that I'm going to be breaking this link. And on the event of that, I am going to go on, I'm going to be called our minions that and it's going to be our message. So disable contact sensitive, place it over here. Get our spawn target into here and then our destroy actor into here. Compile, save it. And should be good. Everything should be working all right. Let's compile and save it here. Yeah, so I'm going to be testing this up now. I have this over here. It should start spawning enemies. And after 10 seconds, I think I think I'm actually going to be decreasing this a bit just to be able to see. Let's make it as five seconds. It's going to be calling the event of that. But of course, uh, you can't, could be calling that on the event in damage. Um, we should only be doing that because it's easier to demonstrate. So as you can see over here, it is not spawning any actor at all because it's not working for some reason. Let's see why it's not working. So I have this, it is the right actor, it is BP Ard. Uh, on the event, let's see, event begin play, setting it as zero, getting our next round, adding one. Minus alive, our round, first index one. Mm. Don't know, ah, yeah, I think I forgot to set the location. So just get after location, place it over here. Now let's see if it works fine. Should be actually one more thing. Uh, no, that, there's no need for that. So let's test this now again. Let me just get a bit more space over here. So as you can see, it, it, it spawned one actor as I wanted, and it should die, and now it is two. Uh, wait five seconds, then it should be three. Then four, and you know the rest. That's basically it. So every time he calls the events that out, I mean, every minute has died, he is going to go to the next round. There is multiple things that you could do to improve that. Uh, you could make, let's say, a timeout between these levels, so you could get from our, let's say, in this event, uh, actually it is in our BP horde, in this event's minion depth, on when there is, goes through this branch, you could set a timeout before calling the next round. You could do that, there would be no problems, so let's say, you could just add a delay uh, of, let's say, 10 seconds so that your player could do something in this meantime before calling the next round. Let's make it five. And yeah, that's basically it. Just don't forget that you can improve that by just getting the round and if you want to personalize your levels, just get a swing to it. And that's basically it. That's basically what I want to demonstrate. So let's save everything. Thanks a lot for watching this video and of course I hope to see you again soon.
visit train.memtinteract.com and enroll into this course to get all source files. Use coupon code MEMT to enroll for free.